Howdy, my name is Trevor, and I'm up here in the Superior National Forest, in which I'll be teaching you a little bit about the Northwoods ecology. <laughs> 10 to 12,000 years ago, this land was covered in glaciers, large sheets of compacted snow that could be up to a mile high. These glaciers carved the land, creating lakes and rivers and revealing Precambrian rock. Trees growing in this coniferous forest must have a shallow root system to survive in this poor, thin soil. Now let's identify some trees. This tree is a white pine, easily recognizable by its tall, straight trunk. One way you can identify a white pine is by its cones, as white pines have these long, skinny cones. Another way you can identify the white pine is by their leaves. As you can see here, there are five leaves per physical or bundle. One, two, three, four, five. And an easy way to remember that is that there are five letters in the word white. W-H-I-T-E, white pine. This here is a red pine. Like the white pine, it is also recognized by its tall straight trunk. But unlike the white pine, it has red blotches on the outside of its bark. Another way you could distinguish a red pine from a white pine is that a red pine has these short stubby cones. And a red pine also has two long needles per fascicle. One, two. While you're out hiking, if you come across a tree like this with long thin strips of bark and then leaves that are flat and scaly as you see here, well then you have just come across a white cedar. This tree behind me is a spruce, characterized by its world alignment of leaves. And if you pluck one of the leaves, you could actually roll it between your fingers. This here is a balsam fir, which actually has flat leaves and opposite alignment. This tree is a paper birch, which you can easily recognize based off its broad leaves and its white papery trunk. The final tree we're going to identify is the quaking aspen, which is also recognized by its white bark. One way to distinguish this tree from the paper birch is that the quaking aspen has gray bark down at the base, and then it turns white as it gets up higher in the trunk, which is often seen in older trees. Both the quaking aspen and the paper birch are considered clonal species, which means that they are all connected by the roots, which is an adaptation to help them survive around fires. Fire is an important feature up here in a coniferous forest. Today we are going to talk about two types, the ground fire and the crown fire. Ground fire is fire that burns on the forest floor, eliminating species such as spruce and this fir, which are shade tolerant climate species capable of overpopulating the forest. The red pine and the white pine are adapted for surviving ground fires. They have fire resistant bark that prevents the flames from migrating up the trunk. They also have an adaptation known as self pruning, in which they lose their lower dead branches to prevent the risks of ladder fuel, which in return decreases the chances of a crown fire. A crown fire burns across the forest canopy, destroying everything in its path. A crown fire occurs every 70 to 80 years, usually ignited by lightning. The fire benefits several organisms, such as the jack pine, which needs a temperature of at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit to open its cones. The open canopy also provides the perfect habitat to allow red pines and white pines to grow in the area. The dead trees also provide fertilizer for the soil, allowing plants to grow and regenerate in the area. The trees also bring insects to the area, which in return attracts birds. Scavengers are attracted to the area to feed on the animals that got caught in the flames. And then herbivores come to feed on the fresh green vegetation growing after the fire. This land is home to an abundance of wildlife, such as wolves and deer, moose and grouse, loons and black bears, and more. So how about now, let's dig out those binoculars and grab your notebook and let's go study some ecology.